parts of the house of our God. Praise you, the Lord. Hello, the boys Lord and girls, and welcome back to another week of Sunday school. I'm excited because today we get to start a new Bible story. But before we do that, don't forget to sit up straight, listen, and participate. So now, boys and girls, we're going to sing some Bible songs together. So sing out nice and loud as we sing about Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever
job singing, boys and girls. Now is the time when we get to watch some of our children recording their Bible memory verse for this week. And this week we have Proverbs 3, 5a. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. So listen closely as our boys and girls share their Bible memory verse with us today. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Proverbs 3, 5a. Proverbs 3, 5a. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Proverbs 3, um, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and not, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, 8. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Proverbs 3, 5a, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Bye! Oh, that was so much fun, boys and girls. I love seeing your videos. Keep sending those videos. This week, we are going to learn part B of Proverbs 3, 5. So let's start by reviewing part A. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now this week, boys and girls, we're going to do Proverbs 3, 5, B. Say that with me. Proverbs 3, 5, B. And listen as teacher Jennifer reads you part B. It says, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So here's the movements that we'll do for this verse, boys and girls. It's, and lean not. All right, say that with me. And lean not. And then we have, unto thine own. Ooh, there's that word thine again, boys and girls. Thine own. So here we sit, here we go. Unto thine own. Unto thine own. And the last word is understanding. Ready? Understanding. Now, boys and girls, we're going to say the whole part B together. Are you ready? And lean not. Unto thine own understanding. Let's do it one more time, boys and girls. Ready? And lean not unto thine own understanding. So, boys and girls, work on memorizing your Bible verse this week and send us those videos so we can put it on next week's Sunday School video. All right, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible lesson. Now, thousands of years ago, God had given a promise to Abraham and then to Abraham's son Isaac and to Isaac's son Jacob. And the promise was that God was going to give them, make of them a great nation. So all their children would become a big nation as many people as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. And Abraham did not live long enough to see God's promise come to pass, but Abraham believed God and believed that God would keep his promise. Well, Jacob, you remember, moved his family to the land of Egypt. Do you remember when we talked about Joseph, boys and girls? Joseph had been given permission from the Pharaoh to have his father Jacob and his brothers and their families move to the land of Goshen, right inside the land of Egypt. So Jacob, with his family, 
there were 70 people and all boys and girls moved to Egypt. And God told Jacob, don't worry, it's okay. God, I will be with you in the land of Egypt. Well, Jacob was given a special name by God, and that name was Israel. And Israel meant the prince of God. And so the people of God became known as the Israelites because they were families that descended from Jacob, or Israel was his name. <clears throat> so the Israelites now lived in Egypt. <clears throat> and their children had children, and their children had children, and by now there were many Israelites living in Egypt. Now the Israelites were getting so big a number, but the Pharaoh, he was new because by now years had gone by and Jacob had died and Joseph had died and there's a new Pharaoh that didn't even know who Joseph was and didn't know Jacob. And when he saw that the number of Israelites was getting so big, he didn't like it at all. So he called all his counselors together and he told them, the Israelite number is so big and we have to do something about it. He said, if a war were to break out, they could side with our enemy and come in and defeat us. So here's the plan, boys and girls, that Pharaoh came up with. He said, I'm going to send guards into the land of Goshen where the Israelites live and we're going to make them slaves. Oh, boys and girls, he took all the Hebrews and made them slaves. So no longer could they work for their own money. Now they were slaves to the Egyptians. And day after day, in the hot sun of Egypt, the Israelites worked as slaves for Pharaoh. They would build bricks, they would make mortar, and they would build up walls and buildings all for the Pharaoh. And they did it from morning till night. And boys and girls, the guards would stand by and they would watch the Israelites working out in that hot sun. And if any of the Israelites took a rest or a break, they would whip them to make them work. Oh, boys and girls, the Israelites were so sad and so tired. The Pharaoh worked them very hard. But do you know? They may have been sad, but they never stopped trusting that God was going to keep his promises. And do you know what else? That no matter how hard Pharaoh was on the Israelites, they still kept growing in number. So there were still more and more Israelites. So Pharaoh said, this will not do. We are not, it's not solving the problem. So we're going to work them even harder. So he worked them harder and harder, and he whipped them. He had the guards whip them, and he mistreated them so bad. But the Israelites always remembered God's promises to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob that he would one day make of them a great nation and that he would be with them. And another promise that God gave to Abraham was this. He said that my people will be strangers in a land. Well, that's what the Israelites were. They were strangers in the land of Egypt. So that was true. But God also said that they would be afflicted or they would have trouble for 400 years. Oh, that's sad news, boys and girls. God told Abraham that his people, the Israelites, would be in trouble or would be afflicted for 400 years. He said, but after 400 years, I will judge the land. So God said, after 400 years, I'm going to judge Egypt and then let my people free. So the Israelites waited. They worked hard. They sweated. They were so tired, but they waited for the day that 400 years would be over and that God would judge Egypt as he promised and would free them from slavery. Well, boys and girls, the numbers kept getting bigger and bigger and Pharaoh was getting more and more worried that there were so many Israelites in Egypt. So he made an order. 
he called all the nurses of the Hebrews or the Israelites. And he told the nurses that any baby boy that was born to the Israelites was to be killed. <gasps> Can you believe that? No way could Pharaoh be so mean that he would order for the baby boys to be killed. But his plan was if the baby boys were all killed when they were born, there would be less men that could become soldiers when they grew up. So he made that order. Well, boys and girls, luckily, the Hebrew nurses, they feared God more than they feared the Pharaoh. So they did not kill the baby boys. Well, do you think that made Pharaoh very happy? No, boys and girls, it didn't. He got pretty mad. So this time, he sent in soldiers or guards into the land of Goshen. And they were told to find any of the baby boys and to throw them into the Nile River. <gasps> he was going to drown all the baby boys. Well, boys and girls, there was one family that lived in the land of Goshen who God had blessed with a baby boy. <gasps> Would baby boy be thrown into the river? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> But this mommy and daddy, their names were Amram and Jochebed. They looked at their little baby boy and he was strong and healthy and beautiful. And they didn't want their baby boy to be taken and thrown into the river. So they prayed to God that God would protect him. And they hid their baby boy from the guards and from the Egyptians so that no one would throw him in the river. But boys and girls, do you know what babies do when they're hungry or when they're tired? What do they do? Yes, they cry. Wah, wah. So it's very hard to hide a baby. But God put his hand upon the baby. And during three months, the first three months of that baby's life, he hardly ever cried. And so Amram and Jacobed were able to hide their baby for three months. Well, when three months came, it got harder and harder to hide him. So the couple prayed together, and they asked for God to show them what to do. And Jochebed came up with a plan. She began to weave a basket, and she made a nice, beautiful basket. Now, Amram and Jochebed had two other children. Their daughter was about 13 years old. Her name was Miriam. And they had a son who was three years old. His name was Aaron. And maybe Miriam and Aaron were watching as their mommy made this basket. And then she put black sticky tar all over the basket. Maybe they ask, Mommy, what are you going to do with the basket? Mommy, why are you putting black tar on the basket? And Jacobet told them, that God had given her a plan to help save their baby boy. And this black tar, it's going to keep water from seeping inside the basket. It's going to make the basket kind of like a boat. And so they watched as mommy finished that basket. And then she made a nice soft bed right in the middle of that basket. And then she laid her baby boy inside the basket. And then Jacobed took that basket and Miriam followed along with her to the banks of the river. And Jacobed put the basket into the river. Oh, what a hard thing that Jacobed had to do that day. But she trusted God and she prayed that God would protect her baby boy. Well, Miriam, she wanted to know what was going to happen with baby, the baby, and so she decided she was going to stay real close to the river. She was going to hide herself behind the tall grasses by the riverbed. And so as the boat that was made from a basket floated down the river with that little baby in there, she would run alongside the river and kept her eye on that basket. She wanted to see what was going to happen with her baby brother. And then wouldn't you know that who would come out to the river that day to take a bath was the princess. She was the Pharaoh's daughter. She had come out to the river to bathe that day because that's what they did back in those days. And you know, she saw the basket and she said, maids, 
go get the basket. We want to see what's inside. So her maids went and they pulled the basket over to where the princess was. And the princess opened the basket and, oh, it was the most beautiful baby boy she had ever seen. And the baby began to cry. And it touched the princess's heart and she loved him. And she picked him up out of the basket and she cuddled him and she tickled him and she fell in love with the baby. Well, Miriam's over here and she saw the whole thing. <gasps> she saw the love in the eyes of the princess for the baby and she thought, God has answered our prayers. This princess is going to take care of our baby. And sure enough, the princess told her maids, I want to keep this baby as my son. Well, when Miriam heard that, she ran up to the princess and said, Princess, would you like me to find a nurse to care for the baby until it has grown? And the princess, yes, said, yes, please go find a nurse to help me care for this baby. And so Miriam, she ran home, Mother, Mother, I have news. She said, <clears throat> The basket floated down the river and I saw the princess come out to bathe for the day and she has, she saw our baby and she fell in love with our baby and she wants to make him her son and she sent me to go find a nurse. So come mother, come quickly. You can be our baby's nurse for the princess. Well, the mother was a little surprised, but she knew that God was going to protect her baby. So she thought maybe this was God's plan. So she hurried back down to the palace where the princess lived with Miriam. And the princess told Jochebed, I want you to nurse my baby until he has grown. And I will give you money to take care of him. <gasps> wow, boys and girls. Not only had God protected the baby from harm, from getting thrown into the river. But now Mo, the baby is going to be the prince of Egypt. He's going to be the princess's son and become prince. And Jochebed was going to be able to take care of the baby until it grew old enough to go live into, in the palace with the princess. What a blessing that was to Jochebed. Now Jochebed knew that her baby was going to now grow up in the palace as a prince. He would not grow up as one of the Israelites. So that time that she had with that baby while she nursed him, she taught him all that she could about God and about God's promises, about God's blessings. She sang songs to him about God and she tried to teach him everything she could while she, she still had the little baby in her home. Well, boys and girls, the day came for that no longer did Jacobed need to nurse the baby boy. And in those days, they had a tradition that when the baby no longer had to be nursed, he would be have a big celebration, kind of like a birthday party. And they would have this big party. And so Jacobed brought the baby to the palace. By now, he's a little boy. And she brought him to the palace, and at the celebration, he was given his name, which I almost said a couple of times. It's hard not to say it, but now he has a name. The princess named him Moses, which meant drawn out because she remembered that he had been drawn out of the water that day when she found him in the basket. Well, boys and girls, Moses now lives in the palace and he got all the best teachers, all the best toys, all the best clothes, and he was gonna be trained to learn all things about Egypt. But his mother and father, Jochebed and Amram, prayed that he would always remember the things that his mommy taught him about God. Now the Hebrews or the Israelites were still slaves and they were still being whipped and being forced to work very hard in the hot sun. And at night, maybe they would tell stories about how the God had saved that ba Hebrew baby that day when the princess drawed him out of the water. And they would talk about God's promise of 
after 400 years, he would set them free. And they looked forward to that day, but they had no idea, boys and girls, that this Hebrew baby, Moses, would be used greatly of God to lead them out of Egypt to the land that God had promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, boys and girls, this is going to get exciting. God's going to use the life of Moses. So now he not only saved Moses from death, but he's going to use him in a great way to help the Israelites become free from slavery. Now, boys and girls, the, the Israelites were suffering, and eventually they were going to cry out to God and say, God, help us. This is too hard. We can't do this anymore. And God would hear their prayers. Sometimes, boys and girls, we don't think about God until we're in trouble or until we're hurting. So boys and girls, remember that whenever you're in trouble, if you'll call out to God, he will hear you and he will answer your prayer. I look forward to next week to see what happens to big Moses when he grows up to be a man. So make sure to be back next week for next week's Bible lesson. And don't forget, boys and girls, to send in your verse videos this week. Proverbs 3, 5b. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Bye, boys and girls. Praise Him, all ye servants of the Lord.